morning and welcome to Rising. Thanks for tuning in. We've got another great show for you today. Hello, Brianna. Hello, Robbie. Let's get right into it. Let's do it. All right. It's Joe Biden's 81st birthday and it's off to a rocky start. A new poll shows support is cratering for the president amid the Israel Hamas. It, it, war, uh, phrased sometimes differently as a siege on Gaza. According to the latest NBC News national survey, President Joe Biden's approval rating has declined to the lowest level of his presidency at 40 percent. And for the very first time in the poll, former President Trump beats Biden in a hypothetical matchup within the margin of error. Biden's decline in support is buoyed by strong disapproval on the issue of Israel-Palestine specifically. 52 percent of all voters do not approve of Biden's handling of the matter, including 69 percent of Republicans, 59 percent of independents, just over half, 51 percent of Democrats, do back the president on this issue. But perhaps the most alarming takeaway from the poll is among voters ages 18 to 34, staggering 70 percent of them disapprove of Biden's handling of what's going on in Gaza. Democratic lawmakers aren't too worried, however, citing 2024 election still a year away. Here is what Senator Blumenthal said on Meet the Press in response. Let's watch. Part of what's dragging down his poll numbers is a lack of support among younger voters for his handling of the Israel-Hamas war. How concerned are you about these numbers and what do you think the president needs to do? Do you think he's still the best candidate for 2024? I think he is the best candidate for 2024. I have confidence that he will overcome those poll numbers. We're a year away. But remember, even more important than the polls are what voters are doing. In the most recent elections in Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, they showed that they prefer the Biden record of accomplishment over the mega extremism. You can picture them continuing to say this as we get closer and closer to the election. Mm -hmm. Like, there's still time. The election is six hours away. <laughs> we'll turn it all around. Um, look, fair yeah. enough that uh, that once again Biden or the Democratic Party uh, writ large had a better um, election night than uh, pundits would have predicted and maybe than some of the polls suggested. So that's a fair enough talking point. Um, however, these polls just continue to get worse and worse for Biden. And frankly, there's no easy out for him because... This issue, which is really sinking him with very young voters, um, divides older Democrats. Um, it, it's clear, probably, that he should try to make this very um, upset contingent happier. But it's not like, but I mean, he could theoretically lose some of the other voters if he did that. I don't know. There's no, there's no, and also he clearly does not want like is not willing and his State Department and his entire administration is not going to easily shift their Israel policy. The funding for Israel, um, which again, I would do away with and so many Republicans would do away with, has been just ironclad for decades and is there is no way Biden actually- But that's the thing, that. like most people who are d disagreeing with Biden's handling of this, disagree with it because every single day they're inundated with pictures of thousands of dead Palestinian kids with arms and heads and body parts missing. And their basic humani humanitarian impulse to say, hey, maybe we should just stop funding and paying for the weapons for and, and creating the weapons for the means of that destruction. They just want a ceasefire. This is basically numbers that reflect that the bulk of Americans witnessing this tragedy and this humanitarian horror unfold just want it to stop. And there's other people. I would love it if all of the people in those polls also wanted there to be an end to the occupation and a retraction of the settl settlers and uh, a, a two or one state solution, whatever the Palestinians want in terms of their own self-determination. But I'm not so naive as to think that that's what's going on. So the bar is pretty low, and Biden is still refusing to meet it. A number of uh, leaders around the world who initially were opposed to a ceasefire, I'm thinking specifically of Macron, who literally made it illegal to be protesting in the streets in France for Palestine, flipped because of the pressure he was under and the obvious way that he was out of step with his constituents and said, fine, we need to have the ceasefire. Most of the world is united on this, and for some reason, even though it's not especially meaningful. This has been going on for seven weeks. Israel has taken more than its pound of f flesh and retribution for the events of October 7th. And at, at some point, it's going to stop. Every siege that Israel has done on Gaza at some point stops. Why it is that the United States, and Joe Biden specifically, is willing to leverage his potential electoral victory in 2024 on something that's an inevitability, it seems, anyway, is really difficult to understand. Yeah, I mean, it 
better stop. They are hoping it stops soon, I guess, so that those images aren't in the public consciousness when, um, when Election Day rolls around. Um, I, I certainly hope it does. Now, obviously, Israel has, um, sounds like they want to do actual regime change in a long-term occupation. Um, maybe that will involve less um, bombings of, of, uh, of tar if they're there. So the Biden could have that to hope for. But it's clear this has really sunk him. Obviously, just the overall not progressive enough nature, you know, a lot of the other things you talk about being disappointed well, sure. with Biden in. Those not are, exactly like you were a Biden issues. voter before this but issue the, but rolled this around. But this is what's so interesting to me. Everyone knows that I've been someone who feels like you cannot wrest control of the Democratic Party. You can't make the Democratic Party actually Democratic if you are going to vote for them no matter what they do. I think Republicans have a faction of their population, including members in in Congress, as we've seen with these um, House members that refuse to vote for Kevin McCarthy, who are willing to say, I don't care if the establishment gets mad at me. I don't care if we lose to Democrats. This is what we're doing. And because of that, they are able to pull the Republican Party to the right. Democrats cannot pull the de we Democratic don't Party care to the if left. We lose to Democrats should be like the Republicans' <laughs> motto. <laughs> but it, it, has, it has the effect of actually being able to create leverage on the party. Uh, it has some problems. So, so sure. I've, been, I've been saying, I've been advocating for, to, for Democrats to have more backbone in that way over a whole host of issues. But regardless of the fact that most people don't agree with me on that, most people are coming around on Palestine. Palestine is a red line. H hearing so many humanitarian aid workers, UN officials and the like say, I study genocide, this is genocide. This is ethnic cleansing. Israel's goals here are clearly to evacuate the top half of Gaza and start pushing people into smaller and smaller um, territories that they can claim that they can settle and they can expand Israel. They're literally planting Israeli flags around parts of the Gaza Strip as they are conquering the territory. And that obviously doesn't sit well with people. And of course, it doesn't sit well with international law either. And so now you're hearing, not just from Muslim Americans or Arab Americans, but from a whole host of folks, this is a red line and I absolutely will not be voting for Joe Biden next time around. And you're seeing the same kind of, I think, kind of delusional narrative from that you heard from Blumenthal from commentators across the spectrum if you turn on CNN or MSNBC. And they all are clinging to this belief that everyone's going to forget the horrible imagery that we're seeing coming out of Gaza a year from now. I think that they're wrong about that, and I also think that they are overestimating or misattributing what the election victories that we just had really mean, Democrats' election victories. I think in those cases, abortion was on the ballot, not just abstractly like the Democratic Party supports a right to choose and the Republican Party doesn't, but specifically in Ohio, in Kansas, these are ballot initiatives that actually bear on whether or not abortion is going to be legal in those states. It's going to be a different kind of situation in 2024, where it's just Joe Biden giving pro-abortion vibes. Joe Biden, a president who said, I don't, didn't used to even believe in abortion rights as a Catholic. Joe Biden, who was VP to Barack Obama when he campaigned on codifying Roe, and then when asked about why he didn't during his first term, said, oh, it's not a priority of mine right now. That's what's going to be on the ballot, whether or not you trust that guy to actually preserve your right to choose, or whether you see him as culpable for having lost that right in the first place. Mm. All right, more rising right after this. Stay tuned.